everybody. Welcome to One More Round and welcome to 2023 is our first episode. And what I wanted to do today is I wanted to talk about a topic that uh, is near and dear to my heart. But before we do that, I wanted to give you a little glimpse into what you're going to see this year on One More Round. Uh, last year was incredible. Uh, we started in February. I think we had close to 50, 59 episodes. Um, and it was amazing. Had some incredible guests on here that, that I'm sure you guys all got some nuggets. I know I learned a ton uh, interviewing them, having conversations. Well, this year's going to be a little bit different. It's going to be more conversational. And what we're going to do is we're going to continue to bring on some incredible guests, but I'm going to have a co host with me sometimes, uh, Eric Stearns, who's my partner in a couple of different ventures, uh, Matt Brandenburg, who's my partner here at Brandendo. And we want to bring different perspectives. And I think they'll really help with that. So I'm excited to have them uh, and all the guests are about to be on. You know, you're going to have professional athletes on this year. Uh, you're going to have business owners that have built companies that are $100 million plus. Um, you're going to have people that are experts in the uh, science and medical field that are going to come on and talk about that. Uh, heart experts when Eric and I do our heart episode. It's going to be incredible. We're going to do a lot of great things. But what I ask you to do this year is to share the show with a friend. Um, if you've got any value out of what we're doing, just, just share it out. It could be something on your story. Uh, it could just be liking our channel, liking our video. You know, we appreciate that. We pay for this 100%. I'm not asking for money. We don't take sponsors. You know, we want to make sure that what we say in here is truly from us and it comes from, from no other place. So uh, with that, that's what we're going to be doing in 2023. Now, since we're starting a year, uh, I was actually just, I had the privilege of being at MenaceCon, which, shout out to the Menace boys, they put together an incredible event. I'll be heading there after uh, today to see, you know, the likes of Sean Whalen. But on day one, which is Wednesday, there was a, a gentleman called uh, Los Hustle, and I'd, I'd never heard of him, but when I looked him up, he's... Uh, quite an intriguing person. He's built huge companies, uh, scaled companies to, I think, nine figures, uh, many, many to eight figures, and he's really good at doing that. One of the things he said, though, uh, didn't necessarily resonate with me because uh, he said that if you're living on referrals, then your business can never make it. Well, I understand where he's coming from because he's talking about you can't scale it and you can't get out of it if you're the only person. But if you're a solopreneur out there, you're getting your business started, maybe you've been in business a long time, you understand that referrals are the lifeblood of your business. So yesterday I was at one of my groups at Trust Integrity. Now I've been a part of this group for nine years. It's an amazing group of professionals, business owners uh, that get together, you mastermind, we talk about what's going on in each other's businesses, solutions that we might not know, and really it's just a great wealth of knowledge. And we had one of the people uh, that's from corporate there, and she gave a training on referrals. And it got me thinking about how I started my business back in 2008. 2008, I uh, literally, I left a corporate job from Gannett, and uh, I didn't know exactly what I was going to do. I just know I didn't want to work in the corporate world. So what I did is I found that, you know, I had some skills in marketing, and I could gain and garner more skills by educating myself. And then it comes down to getting customers. How do you do that? So the first thing I did is I figured out what skills I had, which, you know, I could do some graphic design. I started to learn about website design and development. PPC was huge uh, for me. And I'm like, who could use this and who do I know can use this? So um, I'm going to go through just a couple of questions. If you're sitting in the car, um, pay attention to this. They're true, false. And this was from that Trustegrity training. And uh, it was very interesting. So the first one was great service will generate more referrals. True or false? So think of that in your head and what your, your, your answer is. The next one is people who like, know, and respect you will refer business to you. True or false? The next one is the referral process is hard to measure. True or false? The next, the more networking meetings you go to, the better. True or false? And the next one, the number one trait of successful referral marketing plan is to follow up on referrals you receive. Okay, so I'm just going to tell you that I thought I had aced this quiz because it seems very simple. But going through the first one, great service will generate more referrals. First thing I did was I put true, right? Because if you give great service, why wouldn't people want to refer you? Well, it's false because it's not necessarily true. Just because you do a great job doesn't mean anybody's going to tell you what a great job you are unless you ask them for a referral or you ask them for a recommendation on like a Google My Business. So that's one of the things I would keep in mind. Uh, is when you do a great job and people are happy with your service, say, hey, do you know anybody else who could utilize our services? That one question will get you more referrals than waiting for it. 
So the second was people who like know and respect you will refer business to you. True or false, right? Well, again, I answered true. Well, that's not exactly true because unless you're asking for those referrals, it's false. There's a lot of people that like and trust, I'm sure you, many, many people. But if you're not top of mind and you're not engaging with them and talking with them, uh, you're probably not someone they're thinking about every single day. That's just kind of the nature of, of how it is. Think about all the people that are in your sphere of influence. You probably think about maybe three to five a day, and you probably know hundreds of people, right, because they're not top of mind with you. So keep that in mind, that yes, you want to be liked, respected, and trusted, but you also got to be able to give that ask of, hey, you know, can you, uh, you have anybody that could utilize our services and refer? So the third one was the referral process is hard to measure, true or false. Obviously, this is false. And referrals are easy. You know, no matter what source a referral comes in, you can track that in a CRM. You can put it in there. You can see if it was somebody you got to talk to, somebody that you moved down to the next step where you were to put together a proposal, or even the further step of turning them into a customer. So you can track that, and I highly recommend that. Tons of CRMs out there. Uh, I'd be happy to give some recommendations if you don't have one. Um, but you know the likely the Zoho's, the Salesforce of the uh, the, the world, uh, the the Net Hunt. There's tons and tons of them, right? The fourth one is the more networking meetings you do, the better. And in this one, by the time I had heard the answer, I'm like, okay, this is probably false too. And I'd put true, of course. Now this is only false because it's not a quantity game. It's a quality game, right? You want to build relationships that people know who you are, they get to trust you, they understand what you do, and you really can't do that on a volume play. By going to 10 different networking groups, if you're just connecting with, you know, let's just say 50 different people for 30 seconds, how much are they really engaged with you and how much are they really going to say, oh yeah, I got to send this business to Josh because I, I, you know, I was thinking about it. No, a lot of times it's meeting up for coffee and getting to know what you can do for them and what their business is all about and sending them a referral first and you know building the relationship that way. And it might be three months, six months, a year after getting to know them to where you're finally getting that, that business because they've identified what you do and how you can help some of the people that are in their sphere of influence. So don't think that's an instantaneous game and go for quality rather than quantity. The last one is the number one trait of successful mar referral marketing plan is to follow up on referrals you receive. This is 100% true, right? Because at the end of the day, if you get a referral from a friend, family member, colleague, you know, one of your customers, and you only call that person one time, what is the likelihood that they're going to pick up, they're going to know who you are, and you're going to get that deal? Well, pretty slim. And you know, there was a statistic that 90% of salespeople stop on the third time of attempting to call somebody, where the magic is five plus. So think about this. When you're developing your CRM and your strategy of how you're getting out and talking to people and following up with people, just remember that everybody's busy just like you. So a text, a call, an email is great, but text and call and email until they really either say, hey, I don't want to work with you, which probably isn't the case since they were a referral, or they get back to you and say, oh, I'm so sorry, I was busy, I've been meaning to get in touch with you. Do not let those referrals die on the vine. So make sure that you're following up and that will generate a ton of business for you. Right, so this exercise is pretty fun because then the next thing was identify the people that you're working with that refer you the most business, right? So I want you to, uh, if you're, not driving, I want you to start uh, thinking and writing down who are the people that refer you the business? What are the types of, uh, what are the types of businesses they're in that are a good referral partner for you? For example, you know, at Brandendo, we're a full service marketing agency. We can really do anything from a marketing standpoint that a company needs. From a small solopreneur, and uh, maybe it's just a pay-per-click campaign or building them a website, to a national brand that needs uh, programmatic advertising, needs billboards you know, bought for them, or TV, or uh, SEO, PPC, their website. We can do everything for those people, right? Well, what we find is our best referral sources are the agencies out there or the solopreneurs that are just a web designer, just do PPC, just do SEO, because what we can do is we can bridge the gaps for them. So rather than you know thinking like a lot of people is, oh, well, they're in the same industry, uh, we're competing, no. 
what you got to think of, no, there's a lot of things we can do and bridge the gap for them. Maybe there's even business we can send to them that doesn't make sense for our portfolio, and we can certainly do this for them, and you can work out a rev share. So think about that in your industry. I know, for example, in our other company, Regenerate IV, we do a lot of bachelorette parties, a lot of bachelor parties. So we work with a lot of people that actually put together the Airbnbs for the bachelorette parties, uh, people that have like literally an app that bachelorette parties can go and book up all of their Scottsdale shenanigans and fun they're gonna have. And guess what, we're on there. Well, we've built relationships with the owners of these companies so that they want to refer us business because we know that we're going to give their party a good experience. We're going to get them uh, unhung over, you know, from Friday night so they can get after it Saturday night, you know, and have fun while they're out here, right? So that's one sector that we've identified. And really, people getting married in general are great in our world. So we work with photographers. We work with wedding planners. And these are the types of things that we've identified as a good customer profile because not everybody's sick every single day. So we do work with a ton of naturopaths uh, that we've built relationships as well. And they would rather send someone out to do an IV rather than have them in sick to their office around everybody else that might not be sick that's in there for other reasons. So that was another thing that we identified. And we build relationships strategically by having touch points. Sometimes it's an email marketing campaign. Sometimes it's having them over for dinner. Sometimes it's having lunch, coffee, and, and figuring out what things can we refer out to you if we have a customer that's in that area that needs a service that we don't provide. Right? So in your own mind, start thinking about not only who, because uh, I mean, I had, I had a handful of people that came to mind, uh, people that refer us a lot of business, but then what can I do to intentfully in 2023 to grow that relationship even better? You know, how can I add more value to that person's life? And not a lot of times it's not even monetary. It's just thinking about how you could maybe strategically help their business, a strategic introduction of somebody who can help them that maybe be a better power partner than you in a certain aspect. There's a lot of different things you can identify to help somebody else that's in your network so that you can deepen that relationship and then continue the referrals going. All right. So with that, one of the, one of the things that um, I, I've always noticed is I try to be very, or not notice, but one of the things I try to do is be very intentful with every person that's in front of me uh, because I know that that's something that isn't uh, in our world of sitting there on your phone and not talking and just letting time pass without actually dialogue, that it can set you apart when you are intentful and you're talking and you're asking questions to that person who's in front of you so you can get to know them. Whether they ask you questions or not, especially in the beginning of a relationship where you might be doing business together, it doesn't really matter if they are asking you a lot about yourself because the more you know about them, the more you have an opportunity to refer or make a good introduction uh, for them to where now they're going to think about you. Now they're going to have that what they call reciprocity. You're not asking for anything in return, but as human nature, we want to give something in return to somebody who does something good for us. It's a law of reciprocity. Not a bad thing. It exists. So keep that in mind. Uh, so staying top of mind, you know, a lot of the, one of the most um, important thing that I've heard all throughout the MenaceCon and really you know, any book that I've read on this is making sure that you're building a personal brand. Now, let me stop and tell you that personal brand does not mean social media. A lot of people automatically associate it with social media. Your personal brand is who you are when you're not in the room and what are people saying about you, right? Are they saying, you know, Johnny's always on time. Uh, Johnny is a great referral partner. You know, Johnny is uh, always gets the job done uh, the right way. Uh, Johnny's always a pleasure to be around, right? If they're saying those types of things, guess what? That's your personal brand. How did you create that? Well, you created that by the way you live your life and the way you interact with them. Now, where social media can help is being more top of mind consistently, putting out posts of what you're doing, what you do, living your life, and people, as they watch that and they see that, uh, they start to get to know you better, and you don't have to be with them all the time for that. It's like you're duplicating yourself. If you're on social media and 150 people see you, how much more effective is that of staying top of mind than just one-on-one? -on -one? How much time would it take to be one-on-one -on -one with 150 people? Now, I'm not saying you don't want to be one-on-one -on -one with them, but this is a way you stay top of mind, and then when you're on one-on-one, -on -one, you can bridge the gap because they've already seen what's going on in your life. You don't have to catch up on every nitty-gritty uh, detail 
that uh, you've done. Like I just got done with an 18 day road trip and it was amazing. Took the family across the country to uh, South Carolina to Myrtle Beach, stopped in El Paso, Dallas, Atlanta, uh, then finally Myrtle Beach for a week. Then we went up to Asheville, North Carolina uh, to um, Nashville for several days. That's where we did New Year's and then from there we went and we went to uh, Memphis, Oklahoma City, which you can skip Oklahoma City, uh, Albuquerque, and then home. The only reason I tell you all that is I documented that through social media. And guess what? The entire time I had people on Instagram, on Facebook, you know, liking, asking questions, recommending my buddy Jack. We were out in Nashville and he's like, dude, you got to go to Rippy's Barbecue. And we happened to be in downtown Nashville. And sure enough, there's Rippy's Barbecue. And we had it. It was amazing. Jack was correct. Uh, but they were following along in the story. So even as I've been back and I've seen people that I'm, or customers or friends, they're like, man, it would look so cool when you were in this place or that place and blah, blah, blah. And I don't have to tell the entire story to all these people. Now I'll answer questions, this kind of thing, but that's the relevance of social media and why it's important that you're on there. But it's not your entire brand. It's not your personal brand completely. It's just a piece and how you can elevate it, right? So the next thing I want to talk about is asking for the business. Now, as you've grown these relationships and you have people that you're working with on a consistent basis that are super happy with what you do, there's a few ways you can bring this up. Number one, we'll just use you know, one of my uh, good customers, Dom. Dom, hey, anybody else you know that could utilize our services that uh, we could help like we've helped you? Worst that they're going to say is no. Now, a lot of times like, yeah, yeah, I might have somebody. Maybe it's somebody you went to college with or somebody else who started a, uh, you know, a law firm and he's like, yeah, I think you could help so-and-so. Well, that's really an important question to ask. And as you ask those questions to people that you have the relationships with, what you're going to find is the likelihood of you getting a referral really even within that week or even that day are going to increase, you know, they're going to skyrocket. So keep that in mind of making sure that you ask that. But I'll tell you a good story of relationship, and this goes back for me to 2011. So in 2011, um, we had worked with a company, uh, well, I think you've heard my story. I started with Pure Fitness. My partner at the time, he uh, now, uh, he owned Pure Fitness with uh, one of his partners. And I decided that uh, I was going to go on my own, and they gave me a contract to do lead boxes, which I used to do as an employee for them. Uh, but unfortunately, or fortunately, they ended up selling their company, and now I didn't have that contract. But fast forward, their marketing director, Rick, he and I became really good friends. We actually started a business together doing uh, a lot of fulfillment for another company up in Washington. And as Rick and I got to know each other, he introduced me to a guy named Matt Brandenburg. So Matt is our CEO of Brandendo. At the time, he had another company, uh, or he was actually just working in SEO. He hadn't even started his company. And we started chatting and figuring out how we could work together uh, because Rick and Matt worked with a company called Vision Quest to do all their marketing. And Vision Quest went from five clubs to 10 clubs like that, like almost overnight. They had gotten some, some capital. They bought five more clubs. And Rick had already helped with Pure Fitness. And as they were growing to 10 clubs to sell, well, that was Vision Quest's idea and, and what they wanted to do as well. So lo and behold, Rick brings me in. And he's like, hey, I want you to meet Matt. Matt basically is our marketing director that was kind of outsourced. He did all the SEO. And he says, we should do their email marketing. And we should do their lead gen program. I said, cool. So I get on the phone with Matt. We start talking. And sure enough, he's like, I'll get him to sign off. No problem. Boom. Signs off, we're doing the email marketing. It was a big contract for us. Now, what was cool about this is I didn't know at the time that 12 years later that we'd be in business together, growing Brandendo, you know, a national marketing company, and that's, that's pretty cool. But that came from a relationship. Rick also reintroduced me to Eric, who used to own Pure Fitness, because uh, Rick taught me how to play golf, and we were, you know, having fun. Uh, I was terrible. I, I'm still not great, but I was terrible back then. He got my swing to start going the right way, and uh, as we started to play a little bit more, he's like, hey, why don't you uh, come out with Eric and I? It'd be good to reintroduce you. So Eric and I started to, to chop it up. We, you know, we had a lot of commonality, um, and I needed a lot of things that, that he's been able to accomplish and really some direction, some mentorship. So I decided to sell him part of my company at that point in time so he could be uh, a mentor of mine, and he did. Again, that was an introduction. Now, 
fast forward, he got us a contract with uh, Platinum Fitness, which was a really big contract down in Tucson before they got rid of some of their clubs. Uh, Burnett Builder Fitness, which is another one of his companies, has been a customer of ours for years. We were able to start Regenerate IV together with his partner, John, at Burnett Build It, myself and him. Um, so all of those little serendipities came from relationships. Had I not had a good relationship with Rick, none, neither of those two things would happen. Now, fast forward today, Obviously, there's been amazing things that have happened, but even just on a, a customer standpoint, my first big customer was Advanced Urgent Care. And I'm telling you, I, I shouldn't have gotten this other than the fact I did have the knowledge to help them, uh, but I was a young, budding, single person in business. Um, I was married. I mean, I was just a solopreneur, so to speak. But Uncle Shant owned Urgent Cares and said he needed some help. And I'm like, okay, cool. Uh, let's take a look at what you're doing. And he had me on uh, in front of his board of directors, and we had pitched doing a mobile site. And one key thing I remember him saying that I still resonate, and I tell my team today, he says, here's a mindset you have to, keep, you have, to have when you're working with us. With enough money and enough time, anything is possible. And you got to come at every problem, every solution with that mindset. He says sometimes you run out of money, sometimes you run out of time, sometimes you run out of both. But you got to start with that mindset. So with that board of directors, I started presenting of what I could do to help them. They started showing me what they were spending with Yelp and Dex and some of these other companies. And I said, well, I think I could get you far more traffic to your website. I think we could build a mobile site because this is back in 2011. They didn't really have one. And I think we could take over your PPC and your SEO and double your traffic. Well, he gave me the job, and I'm sure I, I, I gave him a discount because it was like it was a big cu customer for us. It was uh, they had eight locations. They were doing probably somewhere around twelve to fifteen million dollars a year, and I'm like, this is this is a great opportunity. Well, fast forward, we tripled what I told them that we would do, and we did it for half the cost they were paying those other companies. But had it not been for a relationship, I wouldn't have even gotten that opportunity. Because of that. It led me to another company that we worked with for a long time, Adelante Healthcare. And they were about a $40 million company when we had taken over a lot of their marketing, their PPC, their SEO, uh, some of their, um, a lot of their programmatic that they were running. So that was because now I had the credibility in the urgent care world. And Adelante, although they weren't in urgent care, they were in the healthcare space. So those things start to add up. Uh, I know my, my good friend Dom, which I didn't know at the time, he literally did a Google search. We happened to be across the street, our offices, and he wanted me to help him with his pay-per-click advertising. He was just getting started as a bankruptcy attorney, and we had a meeting and decided we were going to work together. And through time, he saw great results. Now, we've worked together very closely and become you know, good friends, but we've worked together closely on the campaigns to make sure they're working and we're getting feedback. It's another important thing is if you are that solopreneur, working with your customers, having those conversations, making sure that you guys are both seeing things the same way and you don't let things fester if you have an issue. You just, you just talk about it. But Dom started referring me to other people that he went to school with. You know, his buddy Gabe, who owned Diamondback Legal at the time. And then Gabe referred me to Simon, who's another good friend of mine. And so these referrals come because you do a good job. And, and I would always ask them, hey, do you know anybody else that could utilize the service? And sure enough, they did. Uh, my good buddy, Johnny, he's referred me a ton of people in the real estate uh, world. So it was, you know, uh, Lizzie, who's a, I think she's the number one uh, female uh, loan officer in the country. And she's very busy, but anytime PPC comes up, because we have that relationship, she sends those over to us so that we can help them. Some of our customers, like uh, Haynes Meyer, uh, who's a bankruptcy attorney as well, uh, Elite Med Spa, these were all referrals of people that I had in my network that either worked for the company or were friends with people that were owners. And that was the one thing that I noticed, and I wanted to, to go through these, these journeys, because you might not necessarily care who these people are. It doesn't matter to you. But what I want you to see is if you're intentful with your network and letting them know about what you do and spending time with people that you actually can work together and collaborate and send business back and forth, it can grow rapidly. That's one of the reasons that Matt and I have, have always gotten along very well. We've always worked together and sent business back and forth, and it was we did it for 10 years. Uh, he would send me websites. I would send him SEO accounts. He'd send me PPC accounts. I'd send him programmatic accounts. And that's why, you know, finally it made sense to where, you know, we merged and they, they acquired Aftershock. And it's exciting because now 
we have a much, much bigger presence. We have an amazing team that is just crushing it in, at, at every level. And that's really because, you know, we've always shared business back and forth. And when we combined, it was like almost like the family already knew each other, if that makes any sense. Right. So uh, a couple last points on this. If you are a, an account executive or your solopreneur, one of the things to, to grow your network that I would recommend, start looking for local, um, basically local meetup groups. This can be a BNI. BNI and is probably the largest, I think it is the largest in the world. There's chapters, a guarantee, no matter where you are listening to this, unless you're out of the United States, which I know they have some outside in the United States, you probably have a chapter in your area within 20 minutes. That's just how they work. They've got tons and tons of groups. What's great is, is these are people in all different parts of business, everything from accounting to attorneys to people that are in marketing, and they're able to share customers to be able to know what each other does, and they're like a sales force for each other when they're out and about. It's a great networking group. Trustegrity is one I've been a part of for a long time. Uh, they might have a local chapter near you. This is a professional group, as I mentioned earlier, so it's Awesome because they only allow one person per category, but again, you're getting to know people that are professionals. And when myself and my good friend Danny, who owns Myriad Real Estate, uh, joined that group nine years ago, I mean, we were the youngest people in the room uh, by far. So if you're young if, and you're like, you always feel like everybody's older than you in the room, I know how that feels. What you got to realize out of that is if that's the case, number one, be really good and be an expert at whatever you do. But number two, be really good at listening because having that wisdom from that trust integrity group of these people that were 10, 15, 20 years older than me that had been super successful elevated my business a lot faster because I was able to not make some of the mistakes or to hear them talk about things that maybe I was thinking about doing that wouldn't have worked out. That has been made a tremendous difference. So uh, other things like coaching groups, right? So the Arate Syndicate, that's one I'm a part of. That's with Ed Milet, Andy Priscilla. Highly recommend you check it out, especially if you're in business, you're an entrepreneur, and you want to, to build business the right way. You know, Andy's built First Form. That's a billion-dollar company. Uh, Ed Milet has built many, many nine-figure companies. And he's done all of that. They've both done that uh, literally starting from ground zero. So it's a great coaching group because if you're starting from ground zero or maybe you're at ground 20, it doesn't matter. If you want to get to 100 or 1,000, they can help you get there. Now, there's a ton of others. That's just one I'm a part of. But these are great because there's other people that are part of that group that, again, can start s sending you business or at least picking your brain, learning your expertise, and then when they're out there, they can send people your way. That's kind of how it works. So next thing is make sure that you recognize that uh, the people that are in your, let's just say, top 20. You know, at the beginning of the year, it's the beginning of the year now, Choose your top 20 of people you want to deepen relationships with this year. And with that, make sure you know their birthdays. And if they're in your top 20, do something special. And I'm not talking about a Facebook post, and there's nothing wrong with that. And I think everybody likes the wall of, you know, happy birthdays of like 300 people that you don't talk to except for on your birthday. But with people that are in your top 20, do a little something extra. It might be a little gift. Make sure it's at least a card. Something to let them know that you care about them enough to know when their birthday is because who doesn't like to be celebrated on their birthday? If there are events, uh, milestones like in their career, maybe they just got a promotion. That's something to recognize. Make sure you're not just on LinkedIn being like, hey, happy promotion because it was auto-triggered. That comes off ungenuine. So make sure that you reach out to them directly. It could just be a text message, could be a call, whatever. But as these little milestones happen to people's lives or they have kids, you know, these types of things, that is going to solidify that relationship even more because they're like, hey, they know who I am. Uh, so lastly, uh, one thing is books. I highly recommend that you develop a reading habit if you don't have one already. Chances are, if you're listening to this, you do. So I'm going to make sure that, one, How to Win Friends and Influence People. Uh, I, my buddy was telling me yesterday it's like the number two book that's ever been sold outside of the Bible, which is not insane. But it's great. I read it when I was 19 years old. The one thing, the one takeaway of uh, hundreds of takeaways in that book, but the one thing that's always stuck with me is remember who the most important person is to each person you're in front of. Themselves, right? So what that means is be intentful, ask those questions about them, get to know them as I was talking about earlier, because as you do that, they're gonna be, man, this person's got a, I really like this person, they don't even know why. 
because somebody's interested in them. Everybody wants somebody to be interested in them, whether they admit it or not. That's just the way our human nature works. So when you're asking those questions, getting to know them, whether they're asking or reciprocating back, it doesn't matter. They'll walk away and be like, man, what a great conversationalist that person was. But how to influence, and influence people, 20 other things you'll learn in that book that are amazing. The next one's The Go-Giver. The Go-Giver was written by a guy named Bob Bird. And a real quick story on Bob Bird, uh, fascinating guy, I got to meet him in person. Uh, back when I first started my company, we had sponsored one of his events out in Ahwatukee. So I had gone and there was maybe 200 people there and he was coming in to speak on his book, The Go-Giver. And before he got started, you know, they had brought him up, whoever was hosting it, um, had brought him up to, to speak and he said, hey, if I get a chance to meet you this morning, uh, personally, please stand up. So there was about 35, 40 people that stood up and nobody had name tags on, by the way. He says, hey, I'm going to tell you your first name and if I get it right, go ahead and sit down. So sure enough, one by one, he goes through this uh, and he's like, Bob, Jane, Mary, Sally. And he got 35, or every one of them right. So 35 to 40, every single one of them correct which number one blew everybody's mind, like how do you do that? And he talked about how he did that. But what impressed me about it was he was that intentful when he was talking to every single person that he came up with something that he associated with them to where he could remember their first name. And to do that on the spot and not get one wrong is incredible. But in his book, he talks about connecting people and uh, the, basically being a connector because when you connect people, guess what? They think about every time they're together, you're a topic of conversation, so keep that in mind. Um, you know, that's, that's all I got for today. I hope this was helpful to you. If it was, please uh, share this out with a friend that you think it could be beneficial to. Um, you know, send a text with omrpodcast.com, and, you know, let's, let's have a lot of fun in 2023. We're going to bring a ton of great guests out. We're going to uh, bring you knowledge that you know, you probably don't have, or at least some of you don't have, and really entertain as well. So uh, thanks for tuning in today. I look forward to seeing you next time.